The Church of the Larger Fellowship is a Unitarian Universalist congregation without walls. We serve over 3,500 members who live all over the world. Over 500 of our members are prisoners who participate in our prison ministry. The following is an excerpt from a letter from one of our prisoner members named Jack Lyle. We hope his words will encourage you to learn more about CLF's prison ministry and the National Movement for Prison Reform. Dear Reverend Riley, I hope this letter has found you with a mind that is sitting still as the mountain does, which sits about five miles outside my cell window here in Arizona. I've been on a conscious spiritual search starting with subtle beginnings soon after I was locked up in 1983. Around the turn of the century, something took place which caused a great change in my life, and I started to seek in a more serious manner. Today, I consider myself a UU Buddhist. I was lay ordained within the Kwan Um School of Zen last year. My fellowship within the CLF prison ministry has also helped to answer some of the questions I've had for years. In September of last year, myself and another prisoner started a UU group here at La Palma. We now have 12 plus members from one of the Tucson congregations who have attended two meetings and they seem dedicated to attend at least once a month. I have given a presentation on prison reform and the needs of parolees, which I personally hope will lead to some type of meaningful social project. They have shown some interest. One member referred to us as the forgotten members of society when we were talking in general about prison last time they were here, and they seem to understand some of the need for prison reform. I was incarcerated when this country's last cycle of trying a restorative, rehabilitative approach to criminal justice was winding down. Our country has not yet been corrupted enough by drugs and greed for us as a society to give up on the incarcerated. Every state system and the federal system had many good programs for both the incarcerated and parolees. A first-time offender could come into prison and then actually leave, ready to function properly if he wanted. Today, that is not always the case. During my time in prison, I've watched as most state systems and the federal system have become all about warehousing and punishment. I watched as criminal justice became one of this country's growing industries instead of social care that it's supposed to be. I'm now one of the 8,000 plus California prisoners who has been transferred to prisons that are run for profit. This one here is run by the Corrections Corporation of America. Now that we as prisoners have lost all of our outside world checks and balances, we should never be placed into the care of greedy corporate America. The ACLU, the Catholic Priests Association of America, and various others all used to keep an eye on the operations of prisons, but now there are no watchdog groups who have enough power or influence to keep things in check. I could share many a horror story about what I've seen and experienced during the years of my incarceration. I've seen on two different occasions an inmate murdered by deviant guards and numerous other acts of violence. I watched one of my cellmates die of a heart attack after being, re being refused treatment by medical staff. American prisoners should not suffer poor health care, the lack of a proper diet, extensive isolations, or failure to be educated. The state of California is still in federal receivership because of overcrowded prisons and the resulting lack of health care. While I thankfully did not die, I now have intermittent vertigo due to a lack of care during a bout with pneumonia. It is questionable whether or not I will be able to work when released or have to go on disability. This is very scary for me. There are times when myself and those like me who don't have outside world financial support go hungry. While all our federal prisons and state prisons are infested with violence, corruption, pain, suffering, and greed, there are some states that have taken steps to change their systems. California has failed to do so miserably. 
It is the only state in this country that will allow their male prisoners to leave prison and not have a place to live. While due to state law they provide housing money to validated gang members and sex offenders, not all counties will help other types of offenders. In some counties, homeless camps with only parolees living in them have sprung up. The violence that takes place within the California prisons has found its way into these camps. Over the last year, two men I considered good friends were murdered within such camps. The way I understand Unitarian Universalism, we UUs are supposed to be the ones that actively educate ourselves about social issues within our states, cities, and towns. And then, we're supposed to be the ones known for constructive change. During the 1830s, some Unitarian and Universalist congregations helped bring this country out of another punitive justice cycle. I ask you, are we as an organization still capable of doing this type of constructive work in Gasso? Jack Lyle. If you're interested in learning more about the Church of the Larger Fellowship's prison ministry, including how to become a pen pal in our letter writing ministry, how to sponsor a prisoner member, or how to volunteer at your local jail, please click on the link in our description or visit questformeaning.org and click on Prison Ministry under our quick links.